Pacific means the place to hunt snowy owls. It's from this name that the Upiavik Inupiaq Corporation draws its name. Created in 1971 by the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, the corporation is community owned by over 2,000 Inupiaq, adding deeper meaning to the word shareholder. Now one of Alaska's largest companies, Ukbjalvik Inupia Corporation, offers a wide range of products and services throughout the world. Ukbjalvik was renamed by Western explorers after British Admiral Sir John Barrow. It's easy to find Barrow on a map of Alaska. It's at the very northern tip of the state. In fact, Barrow is further north than any other community on the continent. Should have enough room for everybody. Bana Edwardson is a tour guide for Alaskan Arctic Adventure Tours, owned and operated by Ukbjalgvik Inupiaq Corporation. Is there plenty of room? He gets to show people around the top of the world every day. I love that traffic light. It's the uh, best one in the world because it never changes color. It's green all year long. Well, one of the biggest misconceptions about uh, Barrow and us in Eskimo is that we live in igloos, but I tell them everybody, every single person that lives up here lives in an igloo because it means house. Another misconception is that we rub noses. We never rub noses. That post office is brand spanking new. It's a couple of years old. No such thing as mailmen here. In the wintertime, we have 65 days where we don't see the sun. That gets to them right there. They can't imagine that. And I tell them that's what drives most people out in the, in the wintertime. This place is not for everybody. But I tell them you can't have the sweet without the sour. You know, if you have 65 days of darkness, we have 86 days of sunlight, just like this. Just like this, 3 o'clock in the morning in the summertime. 86 days straight. I love that too. We are pretty isolated, but we're completely self-sufficient up here. Well, you can only get here by plane. Alaska Airlines is the only carrier in and out, in or out of here. The Arctic is one of the harshest environments on the planet. There are no farms here, and no trees will grow this far north. Winter temperatures of 40 degrees below zero are common. For the Inupiaq, the tundra and the sea are bountiful sources of food. This land is our home. For generations, the Inupiaq have followed their culture and lived in concert with the animals on the land and in the ocean. Since time immemorial, they have worked together to ensure the survival of their way of life. Each year during the spring and fall, bowhead whales migrate past Barrow and the hunt begins. By now, you may be wondering, how do you catch a whale anyway? Well, uh, obviously we don't use 20 pound tests, that's for sure. What we do is we go out there to the edge of the ice. You can see the edge of the ice out there. And all of our 51 crews will set up their camps out there at the edge of the ice with their equipment, their tent, their boats, both an umiak or skin boat and, a, and an alumina boat with a motor. And uh, they're set up in different locations. And since we have our Umax, we cannot go chase after every whale that we see. We have to wait for a whale to give itself to us. So once the uh, crew members are waiting by the boat and they see a whale come to us, they'll jump in the water and we'll paddle out towards, towards the whale and we'll take it with our hand thrown harpoon. We have to get within about five feet of the whale. And after the whale is taken, what we do is we tow the whale from the kill site to the campsite, and then we anchor a, a number of blocking tackles or pulleys onto the ice, and we pull the whale out of the water by hand. Here you go, here you go! Oh. Takes up to 150 people and up to 12 hours just to pull it out of the water. And once it's on top of the ice, we continue to butcher the whale. That takes up to another 12 hours right there. And every single person that goes out to help, you know, they don't have to, uh, they don't get paid with money, they get paid with food. It's subsistence lifestyle. 
How we set up is uh, we uh, try to, we're set up at the point. Right. Max Ogiak is the president of Ukbiavik and Nupiak Corporation. On most days, you can find him in UIC's headquarters here in Barrow. During whaling season, however, he may be a bit hard to get hold of. And then, and then we have to have our our blind. I mean, where we wait. The uh, guys, guys sitting over there waiting for the uh, little to come up, and we're all we stand guard and be ready to like that. Uh, we got a few spotters here and there that uh, travel are looking for uh, whales to come up, and so we'll be ready. To... Max is also a member of the Sagana Whaling Crew. We caught up with him at the whaling camp about eight miles outside of Barrow at the edge of the sea ice. Okay, this is our skin boat and the float right here. The float for the uh, for the harpoon that's right there. It's got the, uh, the, the, the harpoon in front of it and it's got the lance and a trigger that um, we have to throw the harpoon first to the whale. And then there's this uh, whaling gun right here. Yeah. Now we use the, uh, after the, uh, the whale's been struck with a harpoon, then uh, we use our, I guess they were developed in the 1800s. Now we're still using them. They're still doing the purpose. The whole purpose of uh, catching the whale is uh, feeding, feeding the whole town. And the more efficient you are, the better food that will serve the community. And what are you, Gabby? While at a camp, word comes over the radio that the Butkata crew has struck a whale. Soon the whale is the talk of the town, and folks are speeding out to the Butkata's camp to help pull it in. And when it came up close by, we started oaring real slow, quietly. Yeah. Crawford Pukduk is the co-captain of the Pukduk crew. Like all the crews here, they use a traditional skin boat and oars to hunt the bowhead whale. And just approached the guy when we got to it, it noticed us and it started to dive and that's when we struck it. That first spot over there? It was a pretty safe strike. We didn't get caught by the flukes or anything like that. Thank God. <laughs> that success today. We were oaring all day yesterday, too. We were out there nine hours. Hauling a 46 ton whale out of the ocean and onto the ice is no easy task. It's still done in the traditional way. The people of Barrel pull together to get the job done. I, I'd just like to uh, add that. Uh, First of all, I thank God that we were able to successfully land a whale. It's a privilege to be a part of it. It's a humbling experience. Thank God for that. Yeah. <clears throat> when the whale is on the ice, the traditional cheer of hey, hey, hey echoes across the ice. First of the boiled mukta is passed out. Grab a few. <laughs> we can handle the hotness. These traditions form the foundation of Ukbiavik Inupiat Corporation. What we're what you were trying to do now nowadays is you at UIC is uh, trying to make in the, within the companies that we've got to bring back to the community um, jobs and some kind of. Uh, economic base and uh, for our, our shareholders to have and to be able to sustain our, our community to support their um, cultural activities. We understand the importance of helping communities to maximize their potential. At UIC, we understand the second nature of land to its peoples. We value economic opportunity as a means to maintaining healthy communities and the survival of native ways of life. Our history and our culture teach us that working together is vital to the success of any endeavor.
Thank you.